Welcome to the JPS Interoperability Solutions Weekly Product Briefing Webcast. I'm Iggy Brigado, Senior Sales Engineer. And we also have with us Carol Hollingsworth, our VP of Sales. And in this week's webcast, we're going to discuss one of our first products in our Z product line, the RSP Z2 Dual Channel Gateway. Before we begin, I'd like to talk about the ACU Intelligent Interconnect Technology which amongst other things, describes the radio interfaces of the JPS gateways. Digital signal processors have really been a mainstay of our gateways, including the RSP Z2. And by implementing digital signal processors, we're able to allow the sharing of radio and telephony communications between very disparate systems. And what you see here is a common collaboration between, for instance, public safety radio systems and civil support teams. Uh, JPS Intelligent Interconnect uh, allows this to occur. So by implementing digital signal processors and the use of donor radios, we're able to interface with uh, baseband information from donor radios, and we're able to create an agnostic radio and telephony interface. This means we no longer need to be concerned with the transmit and receive frequencies or how, how a radio modulates or demodulates its carrier, whether the radio is conventional, P25, trunked or DMR or even encrypted, uh, nor do we need to be concerned with the manufacture of the radio system. As long as we can present baseband radio information to the JPS interfaces, our digital signal processors will be up to the task. Uh, another important job of our digital signal processors is to prepare the radio or telephony voice communications for delivery over TCP IP networks. And we employ several protocols, some proprietary, and some are standards-based, but we do give the user options to select a transport method that suits their mission or the capabilities of the infrastructure. Uh, we offer two JPS proprietary protocols, and that would be JPS ROIP and JPS bridge channels, and two standards-based protocols, which would be SIP and RTP. Obviously, each transport protocol has its own advantages and disadvantages, but what we do provide are those options. So depending on your requirements and the capabilities of your infrastructure, we have still a lot of uh, choices. And as you can see in the diagram, this is a common use of these protocols. And to be able to share radio or telephony communications uh, between remote gateways in, in this example. And incidentally, JPS has been working on a new communication transport protocol called ROIP plus. Uh, I can't tell you much about the protocol, except it's still in development stages. Um, it'll provide encryption and have the capability to harvest metadata from connected donor radios. This means we can derive such things as user ID of the subscriber units in the field and deliver that information to other JPS devices and services over the network. Uh, this may include such information as man down, uh, geospatial and emergency information from the subscriber units in the field. And we've already worked uh, with a couple of manufacturers and hopefully we should have a fully operational transport protocol uh, by the end of the year. So, okay, let's talk about uh, a product that was introduced to the JPS family of gateways a couple of years ago, and that would be the RSP Z2 dual channel gateway. And on the surface, the RSP Z2 dual channel gateway is a low capacity gateway in terms of the number of communication interfaces of the unit itself. But when paired with a controller, which we'll be discussing uh, on our next weekly uh, webcast, the RSP Z2 dual channel gateways versatility uh, it will really be evident. Right? So the RSP Z2 is a single rack unit in height and uh, two units can be placed on a single EIA rack shelf. The unit is also powered by 12 volts DC, as well as uh, 120 and 230 volts AC, and which are all standard. And the RSP Z2 draws less than an amp of current. And what is exciting about the Z family of products are the one gigahertz quad core ARM processors that are now being implemented in many of those gateways and individual modules. Like all of the Z family products, management and control of the RSP Z2 dual channel gateways are managed through secure web services that reside within the device itself. The, the gateway doesn't rely on external servers, which means you'll always have reliable ways of accessing the unit over the network. 
there are three configurations that are user selectable and one is a localized cross connection between the RSP2's two channel interfaces. This is very simple, a cross connection that has a lot of applications. And one of the most common applications is radio, radio protocol migration where one channel can, for instance, be supporting a conventional radio system and the other channel can be supporting a newer DMR digital system. A simple cross connection configuration is an easy way to migrate from one radio system uh, to another. And we also have a, a police agency customer that is uh, using an RSBZ2 to make a simple association uh, between their radio system and the county sheriff radio system, specifically when conducting prisoner uh, transport. And instead of sheriff deputies using cell phones to contact police officers at the detention center to allow access to their sally port, uh, where contact is usually unsuccessful, they can simply rely on their own radios by implementing a simple cross connection in the RSBZ2. And as you'll learn in our next webcast, with the addition of a controller, the RSPC2 can be introduced into larger and more sophisticated and complex systems. So moving forward, the technology is uh, truly future proof. The other user selectable configuration is where two channels can be segregated and are able to backhaul their communications using one of the digital protocols that we discussed earlier. And again, that could be JPS, ROIP, bridging channels, or standard-based protocol like RTP and SIP, and even push talk over cellular systems such as those used by ES Chat and JPS VIA and many others. And the separation of channels is really the basis of JPS bridging channels, which creates a very dynamic method of routing radio and telephony communications in the presence of, of a JPS controller. Again, we'll be uh, looking at the controller uh, in our next week's uh, webcast. Another selectable configuration or pattern is a cross connection with a single digital backhaul. And as you can see, not only can two radios or telephony environments share their voice communications, but the transmit and receive audio can be shared over the network. For instance, to maybe a distant dispatch console, uh, the cross connect with the backhaul has uh, lots of interesting use cases. We have a customer that proposed an idea where the RSP Z2 can be paired uh, with an LTE modem or even a SATCOM terminal such as BGAN and allow the communications to be shared from the fire grounds using simplex communications. Uh, this, for instance, could be a state fire protection agency and a metropolitan fire department using simplex communications on the fire grounds. And because of the network backhaul, in the presence of a SATCOM terminal or an LTE modem, the fire grounds communications can then be monitored by dispatch or even delivered to a voice, uh, voice recording system. Another unique attribute of the RSP Z2 dual channel gateway is its interfaces do not necessarily have to support LAN mobile radios, uh, but can support JPS ROIP and the standards based protocols, even POC. So in this example, instead of connecting a donor radio to channel one, that interface instead can be made to support RTP. And this is a protocol that can be used to interface into third party systems, uh, such as dispatch consoles or even voice recording systems. That's one of the reasons we implement standards based protocols uh, within our, our interface. And by implementing digital backhaul, we, we can create back to back digital interfaces of Dissimilar, dissimilar protocols. This means we can link consoles or recorders to other JPS products or systems uh, new or existing. And in this example, there are three completely disparate digital protocols sharing full duplex communications. This, this is a really unique gateway. Okay, so I'm, let me go ahead and then log into my uh, live RSP Z2 controller. I wanna see if I can switch my screen here. And so like all Z products, we're required to use a secure user login. And remember, we're connecting to the unit using a web browser where the web services are embedded in the gateway. And remember, we do not rely on external web servers in the, in the hardware itself. You know, and as, as I mentioned earlier, users are able to select different configurations. And let me go ahead and select a simple 
configuration and this localized cross connection configuration now remember each channel does not necessarily need to support radio talk groups uh, you're able to for instance associate a channel to an rtp uh, sip uh, jps roip environment and even jps via a push to talk of a cellular application and you'll notice that you can also configure the channel to support a usb headset particularly a DECT wireless headset station can be plugged into the USB port at the front or the rear of the uh, RSPZ2. The cross connection can also be backhauled over a single digital link. Again, I can send interoperable communication to a dispatch center or an emergency operations center or even a voice recorder as, as an example. And finally, the two channels can be segregated and separately backhauled using different protocols and delivered to two different locations. And you'll notice that we can also backhaul over JPS bridging channels, which you see here uh, supporting channel one, which is the subject of our next, week, next week's uh, webcast. Hopefully you can join that. Each interface can be configured and provisioned by right-click on the, on the resource icon. And this gives us full access to the digital signal processors and settings for each of the digital backhaul protocols. And from the browser, the administrator can even customize user roles uh, and manage users as well as their, their passwords. So hopefully this gives you some insight into the RSPZ2 dual channel gateway. And our next webcast next week, will introduce you to the Z2 controller. We'll, we'll discuss how the Z2 controller can create and manage the sharing of distributed interoperable communications over very dynamic uh, network links and how it can even collaborate with our legacy products such as ACU 1000s, ACU 2000s, ACUMs, and XUs, for example, which is a great way to migrate legacy products into the Z architecture. And in subsequent webcasts, we'll introduce other gateways uh, and applications uh, that include the Z family of, of products. So. I'd like to thank all of you for joining our webcast today. And if you need more information regarding the RSPZ2 dual channel gateway, you can always call us directly or visit our website at jpsinterrupt.com. And Carol, do you have something you want to add? We'll send the invitations out to you. Thank you for next week. Thank you very much for being with us today. Okay, thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week.